Welcome to Dorset. We're here at Milton Abbey to see what film treasures we can discover. Let's go and see what we can find. Ewan must be around here somewhere. Thanks Matt, I'm here at the front quad to see where they filmed Tom Brown's school days. This is where they crucified the pupils. Boys who had been at the school for less than two years were allowed to be nailed to the walls by senior people. <laughs> A pretty grisly thought, but let's see what Gracie's found. I'm here looking for the Browning locations. It's being renovated at the minute, but behind that scaffolding was the cottage from the movie. And Tablo, scientia est celare scientiam. The art of learning is to conceal learning. They also did a lot of other shots around the Abbey. But let's head out to Dorset to see what the team have found. Thanks very much. I'm here at Corfe Castle, one of Dorset's most famous film locations. It's one of the oldest villages in Dorset. You can see the ruins of Corfe Castle. This was destroyed in the Civil War. Right now, I'm walking down the road where Bedknobs and Broomsticks was filmed before they fought the ghosts at the castle. I'm now sat outside the gates of Corfe Castle where Mike Lee filmed his famous scene from Nuts and May. It's a nice castle, but I don't think I'd want to be Candace with Keith telling her what to do all the time. That's all from the castle. I'm going to go head down to the train station now to see where they filmed Dunkirk. I've made it down to the train station at Corfe Castle. The station was opened in 1885, but then closed just under 100 years later. Fortunately, the station was opened again in 1995 by volunteers. This train station was also used to film the movie Dunkirk, where you can see all the soldiers disembarking off the train. I'm going to go find Harry Styles now. Now we're heading down to Weymouth to see Eunice. Welcome to Weymouth Marina. This is a popular holiday destination and the location of Christopher Nolan's Dunkirk. Christopher Nolan came here to film the embarkation scene from his film Dunkirk. It's along this walkway and ramp that Barry Keegan ran to catch his boat for France. It wasn't just a film, this is where the real Dunkirk boats leave from. The Weymouth Jubilee clock was gifted to the town by Sir Henry Edwards to celebrate the Golden Jubilee of Queen Victoria in 1887. This isn't just where they filmed the Dunkirk boat. Out there in Portland is where they filmed the feel-good movie, The Boat That Rocked. It's magnificent Monday and 200 gorgeous competition winners are heading straight for Radio Rock. Welcome to our boat of bliss! The International Kite Festival is held at Weymouth every May. King George III holidayed in Weymouth more than 10 times between 1789 and 1805. Thank you, Eunice. We're now going over to Ewan at Winsplit and Worth. I'm down here at Worth Matravers, which is a pretty amazing place. 
Not only is it twinned with Royston Vasey from The Legal Gentleman, but there's also a wood henge. It's a pretty amazing thing, but I don't know why it's here. I know why we're here. We're off to see the amazing Windspit Quarry. It's been a long walk to get here, but wait until you see what's around the corner. Here During we are, World let's War II, go see what's it was inside. Used as a site for naval and air defenses. Wow, After this is war, really cool. The... I can see why they used the Dalek City in Doctor Who. Woodspit Quarry is also called the Jurassic Coast. Many famous movies are filmed here. Around 1984, Winspit was used as a stone quarry, providing stone for buildings in London. Caves were open to the public, but some of the caves are closed due to the tourist safety and bat conversation. But wow, this place is breathtaking. They also used this for John Carter on Mars, but that's not what we're really interested in. We're here for Star Wars. This is where Forrest Whitaker delivered his speech to start the rebellion. You'd never tell me if it was. Somebody's sitting on some dust. Well, if that someone is you, I'm hoping you'll put it to good use. Would I be out here in the cold if I had just pinched 100 million credits? <laughs> that's exactly what you do. And that's exactly what I would say if I were you. This place goes on for miles. You can see that the Star Wars rebellion started here. If you were here just a few months ago, you would have seen a huge X-Wing just parked down there. Who would thought Star Wars would come to Dorset? But this is where they filmed a major scene for the new series of Andor. Well, that's about it in Winspit. Let's go see what's next. I'm here at West Bay, just down the coast from where Mary Anning had her picnic in Ammonite. But that's not what we're here for. But wait, what is that? Not again. Okay, it's okay. It's okay. Of course, what we're really here for is Broadchurch. The star studded police show took over the whole village while they filmed here for 12 months. But as far as I can see, David Tennant and Olivia Coleman just sat on this bench. Let's go see what other broad church locations we can find here. I still can't find David Tennant, but I found the police station. Well, it's a block of flats which they use as the police station. Maybe David's still up in Bristol where they did most of the other filming. Oh well, it's been a nice day here in West Bay. Let's go see what Eunice is up to at Lyme Regis. Welcome to Lyme Regis. Not only this is one of the most beautiful places in Dorset Coast, it is also the scene for a very famous movie. Lyme Regis is the famous birthplace of Mary Anning, the famous fossil collector. This statue was recently put up after a local campaign to celebrate what she did for science. 
It is under these cliffs where she found the ichthyosaurus skeleton that changes everything we know about dinosaurs. Marianne's life was also celebrated in the recent film Ammonites, and this is where they filmed it. This movie starred Kate Winslet and Shosha Ronan. This film showed the difficulty of being a female scientist as well as being a lesbian. <laughs> Lime Regis' first film role was in the French Lieutenant's Woman. This is where Charles Smith first fell in love with Meryl Streep's character. This is also here Timothy Chalamet was seen filming the movie Wonka. But most of the filming for the new film Wonka is mostly filmed here at the harbor. Although you might not believe it today, but they make this whole area look like winter. Right, let's go see what we can find in Dorset. We're up here overlooking the whole 18 miles of Chesil Beach. It's a pretty amazing view. We're going to go down now and see what was filmed in. This part of Dorset was formed 20,000 years ago when the sea level started rising from the Ice Age. I made it down here to Chesil Beach, a scene of another source Sharonan film. It was while sat on this beach that the couple in Ian McEwan's book on Chesil Beach struggled in their honeymoon. So sad. Most of the stones on the side of this beach are the size of a jelly bean. However, further down the southeast, they're the size of a potato. More famously, this is the location of the burrow from Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. It was through these reeds that Harry and Ginny were getting chased by the Death Eaters. Harry? We're now done at Chesil Beach, we're going to go head over to Lulworth Cove to see what Amelia is up to. Hi, welcome to Lulworth Cove, the world famous scallop shape inlet. This amazing place welcomes over half a million visitors a year. It's also been the scene of some pretty amazing Hollywood movies. Let's go down and have a closer look. Just over my shoulder here is what's soon to be Bobby Darren's um, California retreat in Beyond the Sea. It was at this swimming pool where Kevin Stacey's character lived out his celebrity dreams. Kevin Spacey wasn't the only star to come to Zorset. Let's go see who else we can find. We're at the beach now where Brad Pitt arrives at the end of the zombie film, World War Z. It doesn't look like the end of the world, but Lulworth Cove actually stood in for Nova Scotia, which was the only place where zombies didn't touch in the movie. Brad Pitt's character, Jerry Lane, comes in right through that to be reunited with his family. Right behind me is where they built some wooden stairs for when Jerry Lane returned and his family in the army were waiting on them for his return. Thank you, Amelia. We're now going to head over to Eunice at Studland Beach. Look at the stars, look how they shine for you. And everything you do. Yeah, they were all. Welcome 
to Stutland Beach. Oh, oh my God, was that Chris Martin? So it turns out this is where Coldplay filmed their famous song, Yellow. It's also where Oliver Stone came to fill full metal jacket. Who would have thought these dunes would have doubled up for Vietnam? Anyone who runs is a BC. Anyone who stands still is a well-disciplined BC. <laughs> Hold on, I see something over there. God, it's a castaway from Monty Python. <laughs> wow, who thought he would still be here? Not only did the castaway came here, this was also Princess Diana favorite beach. It's also the home of the biggest seahorse colony in the UK. What a beach! Welcome to Dirtle Door, one of the most famous places on the British coast. Let's go down and see what this World Heritage Site has to offer. We've made it down to the world famous arch, the site of Cliff Richard's Saviour's Day, and more recently, the Doctor Who Regeneration. Amazing as it is, if we head further down the beach, we might spot Nanny McPhee having a picnic. Right here is where Nanny McPhee sat down and told the children that their father was getting remarried. And it was a bit warmer then. It's a long climb, but worth every minute. It's been pretty amazing seeing what Dorset has to offer. Turns out that here at Milton Abbey is where they filmed the Todd's Shoe advert. That's about it from Dorset, we've had a great time. <laughs>